Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed products. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black green sacrifice deck titled Plum the Pests, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and the deck features a ton of new cards from Strixhaven, including cards with the learn mechanic, so we've got a sideboard to potentially learn from, and one of the centerpieces of the deck is Sedgemore Witch, 3 mana for a 3-2 human warlock with menace, and Ward makes the opponent pay 3 life whenever they try to target or witch with a spell or ability, otherwise it gets countered, and Magecraft says whenever we cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, we get to make a 1-1 black and green pest creature token that when it dies, it gains us one life, so the Sedgemore Witch can very quickly generate an army of pest tokens that we can then use with our various sacrifice effects. And the Witch also synergizes very nicely with Plum the Forbidden, a 2-mana instant that as an additional cost to cast, we may sacrifice one or more creatures, and when we do, copy this spell for each creature sacrificed this way, and then we get to draw a card at the cost of one life. So this works very nicely with any pest tokens, since if the life gain from sacrificing them offsets the life loss from drawing cards with Plum. And Plum also works very nicely with our Senshmore Witch, which has the Magecraft ability. So even if we copy Plum the Forbidden, we still get a 1-1 pest token to replace whatever creature we just sacrificed. And then if we also happen to have a Bastion of Remembrance in play, we can just start draining the opponent to death. The 3 mana enchantment enters the battlefield and generates a 1-1 white human soldier creature token, and whenever a creature we control dies, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life, so if we combine that with any sacrifice effects we can very quickly drain the opponent to death, especially with multiple copies in play. So that's our game plan, generate a whole bunch of tokens, sacrifice them, draw cards and drain the opponent to death. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck, starting out with our 1-drops, where we've got the full play set of Eye Twitch, 1 mana for a 1-1 one, one Eye Bat with flying, and when Eye Twitch dies we get to learn, meaning we either discard a card and draw a card, or we can grab a lesson out of the sideboard, and usually we're going to be looking for Pest Summoning, a 3 mana sorcery lesson that generates 2 1-1 one, one Pest tokens. And then we also have some other options in the sideboard, including a Disenchant effect with Containment Breach, and if the destroyed artifact or enchantment had mana value 2 or less, we also get to make a Pest token, and we've got a bit of removal with Necrotic Fumes, which as an additional cost to cast, we need to exile a creature we control to exile target creature or planeswalker, and then if we have a lot of mana and are in the late game, we can potentially grab a Mascot Exhibition, a 7 mana sorcery that lets us make a 2-1 white and black flying inkling token, a 3-2 red and white spirit creature token, and a 4-4 blue and red elemental creature token, so that's potentially a nice finisher. Then we also have the full play set of village rights at 1 mana, as an additional cost to cast it we need to sacrifice a creature to draw 2 cards at instant speed, and then we can also adventure or lovestruck beast with heart's desire making a 1-1 white human creature token, and there's no shortage of 1-1 creatures to let the lovestruck beast attack, and a 3 mana 5-5 five five plays defense quite nicely while we drain the opponent to death and of course can also start attacking. Then at 2 mana we've got 2 cards copies of Dina Soulsteeper, a 1-3 legendary Dryad Druid, saying whenever we gain life, each opponent loses one life. So for most intents and purposes, this acts like a veto Thorn of the Dusk Rose in this deck, since we're always gaining life in increments of one. So that means that if we have a Bastion of Remembrance, if we also have a Dina in play, it essentially doubles the damage output from draining the opponent, and it also synergizes very nicely with our pest tokens that gain one life when they die. So Dina can represent a ton of extra damage out of nowhere, and for one mana we can also sacrifice another creature to give Dina plus X plus O until end of turn where X is the sacrifice creature's power, so it also gives us access to a sacrifice outlet if we don't have a Plum the Forbidden or Village Rites available. Then we have our 4 copies of Plum the Forbidden, 4 copies of Hunt for Specimens, a 2 mana sorcery that makes a 1-1 pest token and lets us learn, so we can easily curve Hunt for Specimens into a pest summoning and have 3 pests in play by turn 3. Then we've got a bit of spot removal with Heartless Act, then at 3 mana we've got our Bastion, Sedgemore Witch and Lobster Beast, and then topping off our curve a bit more interaction with 2 copies of Mortality Spear, normally 4 mana for an instant that destroys target a non-land permanent, but it costs 2 
generic mana less to cast if we've gained life this turn, which we can easily enable, and then two copies of Rankle Master of Pranks, the 4 mana 3-3 three, three, legendary fairy rogue with flying and haste. Whenever it deals combat damage, lets us choose between three different modes, and we can choose multiples if we want to between each player discards a card, each player loses one life and draws a card, and each player sacrifices a creature, so plenty of synergy with Rankle as well. And then going over the mana base, we've got 18 basic lands, including 10 swamps and 8 forests, 4 copies of the Black Green Pathway. I wasn't a huge fan of the new Snarl dual land cycle, so we're playing the Pathway instead. And then 2 copies of Castle Lochthwain as another card draw engine in the late game. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and... Our hand's pretty one-dimensional, but it's not a bad dimension if we pick up some ways to enable Magecraft, so... We'll try it. Being on the play also makes this more keepable than it would otherwise be. Opponent also on a sacrifice deck, it looks like. Well, Sedgemore Witch is one of the key cards in the matchup, so we've got a couple of those. Could always cycle Plumthy Forbidden. But really want to hold it until we play the witch. Point playing a version with Apprentice. So best case scenario, we pick up something like a Lovestruck Beast that we can adventure for one mana to trigger double witch. And we'll take three. Uh, village rights could also come in handy. Don't really want to attack into the two one ones, so we are taking quite a bit of damage here. But hopefully the witch can make up for it eventually. Opponent's got their own witch. And we'll take two. Alright, Mortality Spear is nice. So what I can do is plumb the Forbidden without sacrificing anything to make a pest times two. Sacrifice to the Village Rites and then we can still Mortality Spear. So I guess I need to use my green mana here in case we don't draw anything. Then we get to village rights. And then I think I'm okay attacking here and trading my witch for a 2-2 two -two and a 1-1. One -one. Alright, so that was a big turn. Could have been even bigger if we managed to make a couple pests first. Opponent's got Bastion. And now Rankle can swoop in. And sacrifice my Eye Twitch. That's one approach. Yeah, that seems fine. Could also... Just sacrifice a pest for now, and then in case I draw with Rankle if they don't jump with Eye Twitch, I can maybe draw into a 2 mana play that's better. Yeah, I guess just keeping Eye Twitch on defense also makes sense. Play Rankle, and then attack with all except Witch. And then we'll discard, lose one and draw, and sacrifice. And there's a Plum the Forbidden, so 
All we're missing now is a Bastion of Remembrance, pretty much. So I could keep a Plum. Or I can cast it next turn after playing another Witch. Well, their opponent did get Necrotic Fume, so I'm kind of liking keeping up Plum the Forbidden. Right, opponent's got their own Witch. And plays an Eye Twitch. Alright, so I think we hold Plum. So I can play another Witch first. And then, do I want to attack? Or do we just plumb here? And then what mana to tap is another question. Could keep up green in case we need Mortality Spear, which would be nice to kill Bastion of Remembrance. Alright, there's Bastion. Alright, so next turn we should be able to figure out a way to win. And then for now, we'll just uh, do this. And then I probably... Don't want to attack with Rankle, although if I do, I get to sacrifice a pest to gain one life as well. So it's not the worst. Opponent has four cards in Graveyard, so they currently cannot escape a Strider yet. So I think we hang back. Because that Bastion of Remembrance is scary, and I just need one turn to survive here. Opponent's got the plum, so that's gonna drain us for three. So if they draw into a second copy, we're dead. Let's see if they have it. Another Bastion, that's fine. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, we had lethal on board, we could attack with everyone, and the opponent takes lethal damage before their Bastions get a chance to trigger. Now, do keep in mind, if both players have a Bastion of Remembrance in play, the non-active player's Bastions will resolve first, so that's important to keep in mind for the mirror match, but there's a chance we would have been able to deal lethal damage just by sacrificing a bunch of creatures with our own Bastions here. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Dina into Sedgemore Witch, hopefully pick up some more ways to enable Magecraft. See a Rhymewood Falls, so maybe some sort of snow deck. And then Eye Twitch is a nice creature to sacrifice to our Plum the Forbidden. Although I'm kind of liking playing another Sedgemore Witch first. Can also hunt for specimens to enable Magecraft now. Opponent off to a relatively slow start. It's gonna be a Quandrix Cultivator. Alright, so they're ramping into something. Can still attack with our Witches. I guess they have a Blizzard Brawl here. Alright. Fair enough. Heartless Act to draw. So... I would really like to make more tokens before casting Plum. So, 
I think we hunt plus play Eye Twitch, hit for three. And then just learn for pest summoning, I think. And then next turn, we've got a couple options. Can maybe go for a pass summoning and then plumb the forbidden with D9 play to drain the opponents. Alright, Icebreaker Kraken. Gonna keep our creature stabbed down. Although we can answer it with Heartless Act potentially. So probably attack with Eye Twitch. Plumb the Forbidden, sacrificing Eye Twitch double pests to try and hit our land drop and then I can Heartless Act the Kraken. Or we can take a different approach here, play Bastion of Remembrance. And then next turn Plum could just be a lethal, which I also don't mind. Sure. So we'll hit with Eye Twitch. Between Bastion and Dina, we should have enough life gain to kill the opponents. And Great Hench is going to gain him too. Could still destroy it with Mortality Spear. And a Coma. Alright, so points at 10. But they should be dead here. Since we can plumb the Forbidden. And uh, I could just take it, I could block, doesn't matter too much. Dina drains them. Koma can make a token. They can tap down my witch if they want, or my land even, but we can just plumb a response. And I'll even sacrifice the witch. All right, there we go. Quite a bit of damage to spare. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Turn one, probably lead with Eye Twitch. And we can keep Heart's Desire to maybe trigger Magecraft. Let's see what we're up against. Fabled Passage. Grabs a forest. And we'll grab a pass summoning here. Turn three. Most likely play Bastion. Put on green white. And a Swarm Shambler, so a plus one counter synergy deck. Guiding Voice is gonna learn. And our opponent grabs environmental sciences. All right, so we'll play Bastion here. Could also play Beast without adventuring it if we just want a 5-5 blocker. But getting this engine online seems more important. And then next turn I can hit my land drops with Plum, maybe using the Heart's Desire first. Conclave Mentor, we might have to kill with Heartless Act before it gets out of hand. And then double blocking is risky if they have the one mana instant that puts a counter on the creature. Although that also counters Heartless Act. So to an extent we might want to force them to use it. This will turn into a 4-4. But then we can kill Mentor. 
And I will wait. Can maybe Heartless act in response of them casting it at some point. So I Twitch probably attacks. And then we could Village right, sacrificing a creature to hit our land drop, or we could Plumb the Forbidden, although this would be much better if we can get a Witch in play first. So I'm kind of liking Village Rites, sacrifice a 1-1, one, one, or we could sack the Eye Twitch to a Lurna, maybe get another removal spell. Now we'll just sack a token. If we draw land, we'll still be able to Heart's Desire, maybe double block Mentor, force him to use a trick, and then Heartless Act. We did find a Witch, which, you know, could also be a nice play here. Maybe that's still the play. Sure. Yeah, the alternative would be Heart's Desire, double block Mentor, make them use the instant and in response Heartless Act before it gets any counters. But getting the Witch in play before we cast all these instants and sorceries has its advantages as well. Alright, Guiding Voice now protects the Mentor from Heartless Act. So that window has closed, but big green creatures we can just keep chumping with our tokens. So that's not too much of a concern. So a good turn to just make some tokens. So pass summoning Heart's Desire. Seems fine. The Witch can still attack. Could also plumb right now. Maybe going for it right now is better, in case I have some instant speed removal for my Witch. So we'll sacrifice four. And those will get replaced by additional pests. Then learn getting another pest summoning. And probably okay discarding a land here. Could also discard Heartless Act, although we could use Heartless Act to remove counters and then the second one to actually kill a creature. So our opponent's at 9 in the meantime. Let's get a 7-7 seven, seven Mentor, which will happily chump. If we block with everyone, we drain them for a bunch, but not enough to kill them. But now 2nd Bastion plus Plum should be game. Alright, the machine gun that is Bastion of Remembrance claims another victim. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Hunt for specimens can grab our pass summoning, which will generate more tokens we can then sacrifice to our various effects. Blind Blade into a Lobster Beast Adventure, another Blind Blade. So might be a Death Touch Tribal deck here. Do need to hit our third land drop, so we might have to Village Rites to make that happen. So I don't know if I can quite trade here. Opponent plays Beasts. Right, we hit our third land, so now we could still go for Village Rites plus Heartless Act, the beast, 
and then probably kill it now so they can't run out of Great Henge. And then Village rides in the opponent's turn so we can prevent one damage. Alright, Questing Beasts is problematic. Can chum block that one. So we'll need another removal spell. Now we could potentially learn to grab our three mana removal spell out of the sideboard. Although I wouldn't be able to cast it this turn yet and we do have land five lined up so we can maybe just make that play next turn. And then for now, could go past summoning Eye Twitch. That seems reasonable. Five mana, opponent attacks, and yeah, probably fine to just trade a bunch here. I might as well learn our necrotic fumes now. Opponent does find Finn the Fangbearer. A bit late to the party. Bastion's nice. Alright, so we'll hunt and then Necrotic Fumes the Beast. Grab a Pest Summoning. Now this does exile the Pest so we don't gain one life. I had another questing beast, unfortunately. So we're down to four, and we take a bunch of poison. Don't have a second necrotic fumes in the sideboard. So things got uh, pretty complicated all of a sudden. I could play Bastion plus Village Rites in the hopes of finding another Heartless Act or our. Uh, for mana removal spell, which will then only cost two. Although I'll still need a land before we can cast any of those. I could just go past summoning and then plumb the forbidden. But I think we want to get Bastion in play. And then village rights will still keep me alive. And then I'll pass and then chum block Finn. Plus village rights. Alright, there's a heartless act, so actually would have worked out had we main phased it too. The rankle's nice. So now we have a couple options. I'm sort of liking Pest Summoning plus Heartless Act this turn. Or we could go Bastion plus Heartless Act. Pest Summoning also lets me Village Rite, so that's more mana efficient. And then we'll wait for Heartless Act in case they have another Questing Beast. This also leaves an extra token in play to maybe allow Rankle to get in an attack. So we can block Finn. Village rights. And Heartless Act. And hope they don't have a Snakeskin Veil. Alright, so far so good. 
get to untap. Mortality spear is great. Alright, so we might have turned the corner here. So this seems like a reasonable turn for Bastion plus Rankle. I can sacrifice the pests. Get rid of Finn. I guess they might have the ramp through here. Alright. So, still trigger Bastion. And we're not that to a questing beast attack. So the question is, do I want to attack with a pest token? Doesn't seem worth it. Alright, questing beast number three. So I have to block in order not to die to poison. Alright, so we're hanging in there. So now the plan's probably to plumb the forbidden sacking my token and then hoping to draw anything that makes a creature an immortality speared beast. Castle and a lance. That's unfortunate, so I think we're dead. I can Mortality Spear the Beast, but then we die to poison. Just flooded out a bit in the end here. Can activate Castle and go out on our own terms. Felt like we... We're about to stabilize, but yeah, that uh, ran through. Maybe could have played around it a little bit better. So a rankle wouldn't have died. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. I twitch into probably Heart's Desire. Turn 3 Bastion, and then Plum can start draining the opponent as well. Facing a Ginger Brute which stays on defense. Could also hold my heart's desire to play after we play Witch to trigger Magecraft, which I don't mind. So we'll pass. Does require us to draw a fourth land. Could also decide to cast my Plum of the Forbidden right now, just to hit our land drops and then hopefully find another one after we deploy Witch. But I'll take it. Alright, we do have land 4, so this turn Bastion, next turn Witch plus Heart's Desire, and then Plum can draw us a ton of cards and hopefully replace our creatures that died with additional pests. Not sure what our opponent's up to, some sort of blue black artifact deck. I see Dasher Octopus mutated, so they can activate the ability and attack us for two and draw a card. Evasive threats that we can chum block could give us some issues. But it's still a one mana investment each turn. So if they can't answer the Witch, we're in pretty good shape. If they can, things are going to get a lot more difficult. Alright, Octopus hits us for two. They have a lot of cards in hand, it's going to be a Temple for turn. And we get to untap, and we even found a Mortality Spear, so this is perfect. So we'll start by attacking. And then sacrifice four creatures. And our opponent concedes. 
We were gonna get to drain the opponent for four, make five pests, draw five cards, mortality spear, make another pest. So this game seemed pretty over. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. We'll need to get our witch in play and have it survive for this hand to function. Could cycle plumb and really wanna get our witch in play first, opponent on green white. So not the best board to play Rankle, but we might just Mortality Spear next turn for full price. Aspirants gets immediate value. Hunt for specimens. Alright, so we've got a couple options. Rankle's gonna be great if we can make some tokens first. This turn I could hunt for specimens and then in the opponent's turn maybe chum block with my pest and then still cast Mortality Spear. That sounds appealing. So let's do that. And get a summoning. And then next turn we can rankle. Another mentor, so this aspirant's gonna be scary. Third mentor, alright. So they get four plus one counters here. Opponents considering not even attacking. Stays back. Well, then we'll just plumb. For two, tokens get replaced. Although we didn't get to use our Mortality Spear. I twitch to draw. So, Rankle Attack Sacrifice. Is there a better line? I guess if my opponent blocks one of my pests, then it enables Mortality Spear, so I can double Spear. But then we give up the Rankle play. Or I can pass Summoning, pass, and then hope to Mortality Spear if they do attack into my pest. Rankle sounds better here. And then we'll choose all three modes, discarding a land. Opponent can gain a bunch of life off their Conclave Mentors. We're just digging for a Bastion of Remembrance pretty much. And then next turn, Rankle can sacrifice another pest to enable a 2-mana Spear, so we can summoning plus Spear, perhaps. Alright, Inscription takes out Rankle. Both Rankle and Suchmore Witch were high-value targets. And I'll block with the Pests. Hunt for specimens is good, so we can keep making tokens. Could also decide to full price mortality spear so the witch can attack for three, but opponent's gonna gain a ton of life, so this is not really a racing situation. And then hunt could also get a removal spell if we want to. It seems fine. So our hands all removal. And we can double spell next turn. At this point, if we find another Plum the Forbidden, we can draw a million cards. 
Hydra for three, keeping up snow-covered forests, so they might have snakeskin veil to protect their creature. I'll happily jump. I guess we can lead with Necrotic Fumes. Sadly, this exiles, so it doesn't trigger our pest token. So maybe we want to attack with some of our pests. So now Mortality Spear only costs two mana. Which is gonna help. So start with uh, fumes. Take out aspirants. Or I guess we want to exile the mentor and destroy the aspirants so they don't gain the life. Exile the tapped pest token. Alright, they did have the snakeskin veil. Alright, so. I guess we just kill Aspirants and then kill Scourge and then try to ignore the Mentor so they don't gain a ton of life. And then we'll just keep jumping these, eventually find a Bastion. We've got a Castle too here to draw more cards. Alright, there's Bastion, perfect. And then we can still activate Castle. And does the Eye Witch want to attack? I guess Witch could attack. We'll keep the Eye Witch back. Let's just learn, find another Pest Summoning. Activate a castle. Philotrites is nice, although we can cast it in the opponent's turn. So yeah, the mentors, while very large, struggle to get past our tokens. And Dina should be able to close out the game here. Each sacrifice gains us two life and deals one damage, so that's three damage total. Alright, there we go, so we dismantled the plus one counter deck onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. No green mana, but no green spells. Our deck is really just splashing green for a handful of cards at the end of the day, so... Could also see building this deck without green and maybe go black-white to gain access to... ...some white cards or... ...turn one duress is gonna take our hunt. That's fine. So 
so it looks like another mirror match. Well, um, probably gonna play the witch and hope it survives. And then we've got a uh, plum combo here. Alright, opponent does have Bastion. And land is good. So this turn past summoning plus village rights. And next turn draw a million cards. Another apprentice. I've tried apprentice, does have the downside of dying to stomp. That's one of the major drawbacks. Alright, they did have an eliminate, sadly. So we'll village rights. I guess we'll still sacrifice a pest. Alright, we've got our own Bastion. I think we play Bastion, play Eye Twitch, and then next turn we can draw a bunch of cards. Second Bastion, alright. Not the best synergy with Apprentice, but of course a key card in the matchup. So, we can attack with our eye twitches. And then hope the opponent doesn't find a plum. How many creatures do I sacrifice? How about... One eye twitch? And maybe like three pests? Alright, we found another Bastion. That was the goal. And then Containment Breach can answer an opposing Bastion as well. So I'm kind of liking destroying their Bastion. And then next turn I can play my second plus Village Rites. Well, it looks like they might have their own Plum here. Nope, they don't. Opponent on taps. Maybe it was just another spot removal spell like Eliminate. Search for Black's gonna go digging. Although they are at 11, so they can't pay too much life. They're at 2. So they better have some ways to gain life here. They might have found a plum. Alright, so what do we do? Play Bastion. And then... Attack with Eye Twitch. And we can respond to the opponents. Gaining life with their apprentice by casting Village Rites, which would drain the opponent for two and kill them. Now... Opponent has their own Bastion, so we're the active player, so the non-active triggers resolve first. So that's important to keep in mind. So if I attack with a token here, they can trade and they'll gain a life before we drain them. So I think that means we Heart's Desire. And then I'll just have to pass a turn. And if my opponent pulls a trigger, we can respond with village rights and kill them. Alright, so... In response, village rights. And we'll see if they have another instant here. Alright, opponent does have the plum. So that's pretty strong with double apprentice in play.
draw two. And as the dust settles, our opponent's at six, we're at 11. Although next turn, Rankle might be able to close out the game. Assuming they don't gain more life. Opponent used to learn to discard and draw. So they're desperate for another plum, perhaps. And yeah, Bastion's gonna resolve first for me. So I'm actually fine making these chumps. Hard loss act kills one, so that keeps him alive. Although now they're tapped out, and Rankle's certainly gonna close the game. Another plum would have also done here. Alright, sweet. So, yeah, you got to see a bit of the Witherbloom Apprentice in action. Fine card combined with plum, not super synergistic with Bastion. So it's a little bit different than Dina, but of course the 3 versus 2 toughness is what makes a big difference in standard these days. So yeah, overall this black-green Wither Bloom sacrifice deck is not going anywhere, it's definitely a very popular deck in standard right now. So maybe start packing some hate for all those tokens, at least in the sideboards, cards like Carvac, giving everything minus one minus one. Seems like a pretty well positioned card, even though it can sometimes help the opponent, giving them a permanent sacrifice outlet. But there's definitely some cards worth considering. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.